Memorial Day is when our nation pauses to reflect on the sacrifices made by the men and women of our armed forces. Laura Aguirre shows us how the nation honored its fallen heroes today. To all those here and across the nation who are grieving the loss of a loved one who wore the uniform, our Gold Star families, to all those with loved ones still missing and unaccounted for, I know how painful it can be. The president remembering all those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our nation, part of the 155th National Memorial Day observance at Arlington National Cemetery Monday. We must never forget the price that was paid to protect our democracy. The president also laying a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Some of the country's last surviving World War II veterans were among those gathered at the memorial honoring their fallen comrades. The veterans placed wreaths in remembrance, escorted by soldiers and sailors of all military branches. A Joint Services Honor Guard led the ceremony at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall, inscribed with the names of over 58,000 service members who gave their lives in service of our country. We have only one truly sacred obligation, to prepare those we send into harm's way and care for them and their families when they come home and when they don't. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. Now onto a scary scene in Florida over the weekend. Just look at this, a car right there plowing into the water on Saturday. How does that happen? Well, the Volusia County Sheriff's Office says the driver was speeding down the beach in Smyrna Dunes Park. The car got close to several families and their dogs, almost hitting a child. The driver, a 26-year-old woman, was in charge with a DUI and reckless driving. And thankfully, amazingly, nobody was hurt. The next step in raising the debt ceiling will happen tomorrow. That's when the House Rules Committee will consider the deal reached over the weekend by President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. The agreement would cut out spending and suspend the debt ceiling through January 1st of 2025. This will be a big test for the deal because some of the Republicans on the Rules Committee have been very critical of the agreement. If those Republicans vote against the deal, it would then fail unless some Democrats vote to advance the bill out of committee for a full House vote. I think at the end of the day, people can look together to be able to pass this in the House and the Senate together to sign it and send it to the president. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has warned if the U.S. can't borrow more money as soon as June 5th, we would no longer be able to pay our bills. Now, this Memorial Day weekend was one of the busiest travel holidays since before the pandemic, and the Transportation Safety Administration screened a record number of passengers at airports across the country. Yeah, while AAA estimated millions more hitting the roads to get to and from their holiday destination, ABC's Melissa Don shares the record-breaking travel from Los Angeles. Travel is back from the skies to the ground. The 2023 Memorial Day holiday weekend breaking travel records. TSA says they screened more than 2.7 million passengers at airports around the country Friday, making it the single busiest travel day since Thanksgiving of 2019. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg praising how the airlines and airports handled that rush as fewer than 1% of flights were canceled. But lines were long at airport security. ABC's Elwin Lopez monitoring them in Atlanta. The holiday scramble is on TSA lines stretching all the way into the atrium. Here in Atlanta, we could see more than 2 million passengers up until May 31st. The best advice is to arrive early to the airport and double check your bags for any prohibited items before getting to the security checkpoint. I'm still surprised by the line right now. I thought I'd be on like two hours, I'd be okay, but I'm uh, kind of looking. That's kind of long, but I'll make it. For travelers hitting the roads, it's just as busy. AAA estimated 37 million people driving to and from their destinations this holiday weekend. I have a lot of travel plans for the summer and don't need to travel this weekend with all the hustle and bustle. The demand for travel is up. While AAA saw about 2 million more drivers on the road than last year, they are expecting an even busier summer of travel. Melissa Adon, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, so we already have warm weather here, but you know, sunscreen is a great way to protect your skin. But here's the thing, you have to apply it correctly. 
after the break, the sunscreen mistakes that you may be making and also how to fix them. Well, it is the unofficial start of summer, and as you spend more time outside, don't forget to protect your skin from all that sun. Something you should also always do, even yep. during the winter. But by the way, you know, sunscreen, a great tool to do that, but a lot of health experts say that a lot of people aren't applying it the correct way. Mandy Gaither has more on sunscreen mistakes and also how to fix them. It's that time of year again when many are out enjoying the warmer weather, but protecting your skin is critical. Sunscreen is the most uh, common and one of the easiest ways to do it. We just have to remember to use our sunscreens. Dermatologist Susan Masick with the Ohio State University's Wexner Medical Center says sunscreen mistakes are often made when applying it. They assume they can just apply it when they're already at their activity or they're already at the pool or the beach, but you actually have to apply it about 10 to 15 minutes beforehand. You also have to remember to reapply every two to three hours. If you're swimming or sweating, you'll need to reapply even more often. Masick says mineral sunblock may be easier on sensitive skin, but the best kind of sunscreen is the one you'll actually use. We want to make sure that we're using the type that is both UVA and UVB protective, so it's broad spectrum protection. Masick says another mistake is not using enough sunscreen. She says you can never put on too much. We tend to quantify by, uh, you know, two ping pong balls worth of a sunscreen and apply it all over. You want to make sure that you apply to all the areas that are exposed, where it's, whether it's your face, your ears, hands, feet. And don't forget sunscreens expire. Masick says to replace them every year. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. All awesome advice, although if you were out there right now, it would just get <laughs> washed away. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is an actual live cam that we have set up. You would normally see our skyline in San Antonio. This is yeah. from our south side city cam, but you know what you see there? Nothing. A lot of gray, 70 degrees out there right now, Sarah. Yeah, that's because the heaviest of the rain right now is falling right over downtown San Antonio. You can see a few flashes of lightning there as well. We're not concerned about severe weather, but I do want to show you that there is a flash flood warning in effect in Bear County until 930 p.m. Not really concerned about hail, but the biggest issue is going to be localized flooding. Take a look a little bit uh, closer to San Antonio here. We can highlight some of the areas getting the heaviest of the rain from Kirby down to Highland Park now just starting to rain at Calaveras Lake and then towards Somerset as well. That's where we're seeing some of the heaviest rain. Plenty of flashes of lightning here, but the heaviest of the rain is starting to end where we've had one to three inches of rainfall across parts of northwestern Bear County. Right now we do have some small hail occurring near Concan and up in the hill country and then further to the east, just some isolated rain out near Hallettsville. These storms are slowly starting to push southeast at about five to ten to even 15 miles per hour. As they do so, they'll exit. The airport is 72 degrees right now, but windy, lots of rain. Once the sun sets at 828, we're going to see our rain chances coming to an end for the evening, clearing skies 71 by about midnight. All of the latest on rainfall amounts, and we'll take a look at the rest of the week coming up in a bit. Tonight, a man is in custody for allegedly setting fire to multiple homes. This afternoon on Delgado and Arbor Streets, crews were assigned to nearby homes to monitor for potential threats. Authorities eventually found the suspect and took him into custody. No word on what charges he's facing. A man is dead after being hit by multiple vehicles while crossing I-35. Police say the man was repeatedly hit by passing vehicles because they didn't see him during the late night hours. He died at the scene. His name has not yet been released. Today over at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery, they held their Memorial Day ceremony to honor the people who were buried there. Military families and active duty members attending the service to spend time with those they lost. Those who attended also brought gifts for veterans and flags to honor service and specific military members. Today, Senator John Cornyn hosting a send off for local high school students attending service academies this summer. Around 100 academy bound students and their families attended that send off at Freeman Expo Hall. And that is your 60 second recap. 
And we can tell you that the storms have made it to downtown San Antonio because we can hear the thunder here in the studio. Constantly. Yes. Absolutely, yes. The heaviest part of the storm now moving through San Antonio, downtown San Antonio as we speak. Let's go ahead and just remind you of the situation that's going on. There is a uh, flash flood warning in effect for Bear County until 930 this evening. We have already seen areas of one to three inches of rain that has fallen, except I will say that areas generally uh, east of 1604 here really have not seen much rain today. That's the luck of the draw throughout the day. That's why we have scattered showers and storms in nature. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the flash flood warning here and show you the flashes of lightning that are occurring around downtown San Antonio right now down to China Grove, Calaveras Lake and Elmendorf. A lot of people outside trying to enjoy the rest of the holiday. But the thing is, is you're going to need a duck inside really quick until these storms pass. And we do expect all rain to end after sunset. These storms are really fueled on the sunlight. And so once they lose that sunset uh, sunlight, rather, they are going to end up uh, dissipating completely. Turning off the lightning now, and I want to show you the rainfall rates with this storm that's falling uh, through parts of areas of San Antonio. We're looking at rainfall rates of about uh, four inches an hour. That means if this storm was to just park itself for four uh, for an hour, it would produce four inches of rain. It's not. However, it is moving to the southeast at about 25 miles per hour, so it could make it to the Floresville area by about 747 this evening. Poteet now just starting to see the rain as well, and what a lot of rain we have seen fall here. I'm going to go ahead and look at some of these rainfall amounts. Take a look at the rain uh, fall, especially over northwestern Bear County. Anywhere you see these yellows from uh, UTSA to Chavano Park to the rim up toward Leon Springs, that's about one to two inches of rain that has fallen in those areas in just a short amount of time on already saturated ground. That's why we have the flash flood warning in place because ground just can't take any more rain. And that's in some ways that's a good problem to have because we have been so dry. And, and in fact, areas that have seen the most rain, like near Comfort, this is the area that we're seeing the most exceptional drought. And so seeing some relief there, I'm sure, from the rain that we've seen today, we just have to be very careful over those low water crossings. If you see water on the road, turn around, don't drown. That's the biggest thing uh, I can encourage you to do. But back to the radar right now, we'll zoom out and we'll put everything in motion here. You can see that these storms are gradually moving southeast, and we're even starting to see the rain taper off for parts of the hill country. So once we see that sunset again, things are going to be a lot calmer for us. However, if you're in Concan right now, if you're in Lakey, a lot of thunder and lightning there as well from uh, that isolated storm that's moving through. All right, taking a look at the forecast uh, for the evening, lots of rain has fallen at the airport. It's become cool, 72 degrees. Winds are gusting up to about 25 miles per hour from the west northwest. And looking at tonight, again, once the sun sets at 830, our rain is going to come to an end. It'll be cooler. 70 degrees by midnight. And the reason for this is as we look at the upper levels of the atmosphere, we've got a short wave in the upper levels of the atmosphere that's produced these showers and storms. But in its wake, the opposite of that, a ridge of high pressure, high means dry. High is going to be moving over Texas, and so we're going to be dry tomorrow and for most of the work week, in fact. Looking at your KSAT 12-hour forecast, temperatures warming up to 75 by 10, 82 by noon tomorrow. High temperature near 90. It's it's going to be humid and mostly sunny, so it is going to be a warm day out there. 91 in Del Rio, 91 in Eagle Pass, 87 in Canyon Lake, and 86 in Kerrville. Remember, that high is going to settle over, so it's going to be dry for most of the week. By the end of the weekend, though, we start to introduce rain chances again. Even though this has caused a little bit of a damper for some folks for Memorial Day, we really need this rain before the dry mm. summer months, so we'll take it. By the way, I'll be live on the KSAT Weather Authority app at around 7:10, just detailing all of the rain that we're currently seeing, how much rain we've seen, and more of your forecast as well. All good information. So yeah, if you don't have it yet, download it, the weather app, the KSAT Weather Authority app. I'm never going to complain about rain in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. So this right here is what you call luck. A Kentucky man ran out of gas, stopped to fuel up, and left winning a million dollars. Pretty good. Yeah, Michael Schlemmer said that earlier this month he ran out of gas and just coasted into the gas station. He said he had 40 bucks on him, so what did he do? Well, he spent $20 on gas and the other 20 on a single $20 lottery ticket, and it turned out that ticket win a winner. Pretty good deal. The Food Mart will 
also get a pretty good deal because they'll be getting more than $8,000 from Kentucky Lottery for selling the winning ticket. Schlemmer got the lump sum of $862,000. Apparently we've lost some power. We'll see what happens here. Uh, then getting $50,000 a year over the two decades, he says after taxes, he did receive a check for more than $600,000. Schlemmer says he plans to buy a new car while saving the rest of his winnings. Yeah, so, lucky. Okay. We so, took a lightning strike. That's yeah, why this that's thing's not working Exactly, anymore. yes. Now, let's talk about Queen. Their music catalog could break records when it sells. But according to a source familiar with the acquisition, Universal Music Group is now in talks to buy that catalog from Disney Music Group for $1 billion. The deal could close within a month. A billion dollars. Yeah. Now, if you look back in December of 2021, Bruce Springsteen, he sold his music for $500 million. And that's the highest amount a song catalog has ever sold for. A billion. That's a lot. Now here you could watch a daredevil pull off a breathtaking and record-breaking tightrope walk over a bustling city. Yikes! The dazzling and death-defying stunt was performed by 48-year-old tightrope walker Andre Loreni high above the Italian city of Milan. He was so high, in fact, he broke the record for the country's highest tightrope walk ever, traversing 670 feet of rope at a height of 450 feet. But it wasn't just for cheap thrills. Loreni's feat was not only the opening of Milan's BAM Circus Cultural Festival, but also a call to action. Organizers say it was a metaphor for the perilous journey humanity is facing due to climate change. And we'll and be we're right back. Gonna go to break. Flash flooding is ongoing around San Antonio right now. In fact, we've got a flash flood warning until 930 this evening. One to three inches of rain has fallen. I'm going to be live on the KSAT Weather Authority app tracking the storms for you coming up at 710.